Throwing a small rock. A small rock is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 22 meters per second from the edge of the roof of a 30 meter tall building. The rock doesn't hit the building on its way back down and lands on the street below. Ignore air resistance. What is the speed of the rock just before it hits the street? How much time elapses from when the rock is thrown until it hits the street? So this is the picture we have. We have a 30 meter uh, tall building. The rock is thrown with an initial velocity upward and then it goes to the maximum height and falls downward to the street. Uh, and this is our Y axis. So uh, let's start with part A. Uh, so the velocity as a function of time will be given by the initial uh, velocity vi minus gt because we have a gravitational acceleration g that is pointing down and therefore this is a constant acceleration motion. So we can note this. And at a certain time, t equals uh, t prime, uh, the rock is at the maximum height. So the rock will reach its maximum height. And it's going to have a velocity at that point, which I will call V prime, to be zero meters per second because it's at the maximum point. And uh, it's basically uh, speed at that point V prime is zero, which is uh, Vi minus Gt prime. This is zero. So we find that the time it takes to reach the maximum height will be its initial speed vi divided by the gravitational acceleration uh, g. And after that point, for t greater than t prime, what will happen? Uh, there's going to be free fall. So it has an initial speed which is zero at t equals t prime and at t equals 2t prime it's going to have a velocity at 2t prime which is minus v initial uh, that is it's pointing downward. So uh, it will be passing the level of the uh, the building where from where it was thrown and uh, it's going to have uh, minus vi as its velocity. So um, the velocity as a function of time v of t uh, will be minus vi minus uh, gt after this point and it's going to be uh, because uh, it was thrown vertically upward with 22 meters per second it's going to fall down with 22 meters per second uh, at the building level so it's going to have a velocity minus 22 minus gt which is minus 9.8 t uh, afterwards so the distance it travels delta y it travels uh, from time uh, t equals 0 to time delta t will be v dt integral of v dt uh, that will be equal to um, minus 22 delta t minus 9.8 over 2 delta t squared 
and this will be equal to the change in the position which is going to be minus h okay so at this point we have the initial speed vi pointing down and it's going to acquire a speed v final as it hits the street and in this time interval delta t it will travel a distance of 30 meters so these minus signs will cancel um, delta y is minus h so we're going to have a 4.9 delta t square uh, plus 22 delta t minus h which is 30 meters is equal to uh, zero so i can rearrange this equation delta t square plus 22 divided by 4.9 delta t so i'm dividing both sides by 4.9 and minus 30 divided by 4.9 is equal to zero so i can calculate delta t from this quadratic equation it is minus b which is minus 22 over 4.9 uh, it's plus or minus but we will take the positive root uh, because delta t cannot be negative so it's plus square root b square 22 over 4.9 square minus 4ac which is plus 120 over 4.9 uh, divided by 2a which is 1 over 2 because a is equal to 1 here so basically what i'm doing is minus b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so that is what i'm doing here to calculate its um, root and basically this is for um, a delta t square plus b delta t plus c is equal to zero okay so if you calculate this you will find that it takes 1.1 seconds so the final velocity v final will be uh, minus v initial which is my initial velocity at this point uh, minus g delta t which will be minus 22 minus 9.8 times 1.1 so this will give us minus 32.7 meters per second as its final velocity as it hits the street okay so part b we want to know how much time elapsed the total time that elapsed is basically equal to uh, 2t prime the time it takes for it to go uh, upward and then to fall downwards to the building level and then after that level all the way down to the street level so it's 2t prime plus delta t 2t prime is 2 times vi over g 2 times 22 over 9.8 and delta t was 1.1 as we have calculated the answer is 5.59 seconds okay now uh, alternatively uh, we can think of it this way uh, the delta t here v of t minus v initial is going to be equal to minus gt so we can write uh, the time t as uh, v initial minus v divided by g on the other hand
we have the distance traveled delta y is integral from 0 to time t uh, v initial minus gt dt that is our velocity dt this will be v initial t minus 1 over 2 gt square and so the distance we travel delta y is v initial times for t we introduce v initial minus v over g v initial minus v divided by g and minus 1 over 2 g t square that is v initial minus v uh, squared over g squared and one of the g's will uh, disappear here so we will obtain by multiplying both sides with 2g 2g delta y is equal to uh, 2v initial square minus 2v initial v minus v initial square minus 2v initial v plus v square uh, parentheses so this will give us 2g delta y is equal to uh, 2v initial square uh, minus v initial square will give us v initial square uh, minus 2v initial v this minus sign will make this minus sign positive plus 2v initial v minus v square so minus 2v initial v plus 2v initial v will uh, disappear so we will find that v square is equal to v initial square minus 2g delta y so we can write the velocity not as a function of time but as a function of position this way so since delta y is equal to uh, minus h here we can find our uh, final velocity the final square is the initial square uh, plus 2gh because delta y is minus h this will be 22 square plus 2 times 9.8 times 30 meters and this will give us or for final velocity a minus 32.7 meters per second we have to take the minus sign here because it's going to be pointing downward so to signify the direction uh, we have to do we have to take the negative route okay so to summarize we're throwing a small rock from the top of a building which is 30 meters tall uh, the rock uh, goes to its maximum height and then falls down all the way to the street level so we want to know uh, knowing that the initial speed of the rock is 22 meters per second from the edge of the roof where it was thrown uh, the total time that elapses uh, after it was thrown until it is hitting the street it hits the street and the final speed of the rock as it hits the street so uh, we have written velocity as a function of time for constant acceleration motion where the constant acceleration is due to gravitational acceleration we find the time it takes for it to reach the uh, maximum height where we, we will have a zero velocity is bi over g it will take exactly the same time to reach the roof level where it's, it will have a velocity of minus vi pointing down so that's what i see here minus vi pointing down the total time it takes 2t prime uh, that is 2 vi over g to reach the roof level again after that point i have started analyzing this problem starting from this position where i have initial velocity minus vi and under the influence of gravitational acceleration minus vi minus gt is its velocity as a function of time and during this time interval if i call this instance instance zero uh, the time it takes delta t to reach the 
street will be the time it takes to travel the distance 30 meters so delta y integral is integral 0 to delta t v delta t v dt and by solving uh, the equation I obtain for delta y is equal to minus h um, delta t turns out to be 1.1 second so the final velocity is minus v initial minus g delta t minus 32.7 meters per second the total time elapsed is 2t prime the time it takes for it to go up down uh, reach the roof level and go down all the way to the street so 2t prime plus delta t is 5.59 seconds then i have shown that it is possible to write the velocity as a function of position. Uh, so by noting that v of t is vi minus gt, t is vi minus v over g, and the distance we travel delta y, the total displacement is integral 0 to t vi minus gt dt, substituting for t vi minus v over uh, g, we obtain an equation for v square. v square is vi square minus 2g delta y. Well, in this problem, the net delta y we have here is starting from here, reaching here, minus h, which is minus 30 meters. Uh, we can obtain, we could obtain the final velocity using this uh, quadratic equation.